new climate leadership needed. Elizabeth Watuti is a Kenyan environmentalist and climate activist. She is the founder of the Green Generation Initiative and head of campaigns and coordinator of the Daima Coalition for the Protection of Urban Green Spaces at the Wangari Matai Foundation. Thank you so much for inviting me to address this forum. My name is Elizabeth Watuti. I am an environmentalist and a climate activist from Kenya and also the founder of Green Generation Initiative that nurtures young people to love nature and to be environmentally conscious. And I also head campaigns at the Wangari Mathai Foundation. Greed, apathy, and selfishness have caused us to continue destroying the Earth's ecosystems. And in the process, we are risking all of humanity's survival. I echo the words of the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, when the latest IPCC science report was released. He said that I have seen many scientific reports in my time, but nothing like this. Today's IPCC report is an atlas of human suffering and a damning indictment of failed climate leadership. That is why we need new climate leadership because even with the benefits of the latest best available science, we are still failing to take the urgent action needed to address them. We are facing an interconnected triple planetary emergency of the climate crisis, pollution crisis, and nature crisis. And as young people, we understand that action can no longer wait. We must allow ourselves to feel the full reality of the situation we find ourselves in. We know clearly that by continuing to destroy our earth, we are destroying ourselves. And if we do not stop the climate crisis and massively protect and restore natural ecosystems, then we are threatening our own survival and committing a gross injustice against future generations who will inherit the mess we leave behind. We must also stop calling young people leaders of tomorrow because they are already leading action today and shaping that new leadership. For most of us, this is a natural call to action to fight for a livable world and a safe future for all of humanity. I remember planting my first tree when I was seven years old. I felt part of nature and I knew that I loved nature enough to protect her and give back. My forest landscape and whole networks of the trees I played, ran and dreamt among as a child are being destroyed, burned down and cut down faster than you can snap your fingers. And the waters I drank from when I was little are all drying up. They're not flowing at the same fast speed anymore and the levels have gone down. The harvests are also failing. The granaries are running empty and millions are facing climate driven starvation. But like many young people, I am not standing back and feeling hopeless or helpless. I am doing the best that I can, just like the hummingbird, like the late Prof. Sangar Matai always said. And I know that our lives depend on nature. So what I'm doing is recognizing her rights and fighting for her life so that we can all feel the joy of her abundance once again. That is why every day I help children to fall in love with nature. And for the past years now, I have been running the Green Generation Initiative. In that time, five years time frame, we have helped over 20,000 school children to fall in love with nature and learn the joy of cherishing and protecting her. And together with the children, we have grown over 30,000 tree seedlings to maturity and many of them fruit trees. By nourishing their bodies with nature's abundance, the children learn that when we look after the trees, the trees look after us and provide us also with food. But this has not been achieved without challenges. I know many other young people share the same frustration. One of the main challenges has been accessing serious funding to scale up the Green Generation Initiative. As you know, it is not easy to scale up and maximize the impact being made through youth-led solutions without proper funding or from one small pot of funding to the next. But even more importantly, when the political and economic system is working against you. A very practical example is when on one side of the school gates, we are planting trees with the children. And on the other side, the children see developers cutting down primary forests. And beyond Kenya's borders, countries are continuing to burn fossil fuels and degrade ecosystems 
which will make Kenya's climate uninhabitable for the same children and the trees that they are planting. We also have a very serious issue of intergenerational iniquity. It is important that we understand that the greatest consequences of today's decisions will be borne by young people and those who are yet to be born. Therefore, we must recognize young people as key partners. Young people will drive the new climate leadership, but must be engaged seriously and meaningfully. Serious youth engagement means internalizing the fact that young people and future generations have the biggest stake in decisions being made today. And centering their voices and their interest in decision making is very key. Every decision that leaders make must be good for today's children and those yet to be born. We must also be in the room to share our own views and experiences and stories on the same. Every day I'm inspired by other young people who are refusing to be victims, who are working tirelessly to deliver solutions and to advocate for a livable future. This is a whole new generation of leadership, a generation of humans who are pouring all their energy and creativity, but we will need the world to get behind our generation, to take our interests seriously, and also pour resources into scaling up the great work that young people are doing. And that way, we will have involved everyone, because for us to change everything, we will need everyone on board. Thank you very much. 